Welcome back to part two of Pray for China, Pray for Chinese Christians. Talked last time about the um, Bibles Made in China at Amity Publishing Company. The largest publishing company for Bibles in the entire world is in the communist country of China. Right behind me here is the map of China. Pray for China. Unfortunately, in China, to own a Bible, to purchase a Bible, is illegal. The government has made many restrictions in the last few years about what Chinese people can do. In mid-2018, China made the law that prohibited the sale of Bibles online. So not only can't you buy a Bible in a store in China, now you can't even go online, clickety-click on Amazon or eBay or any bookstore or any bookseller. You cannot purchase a Bible online. Now, many times in America, we purchase things, and they come from China, and they send to us. In China, you cannot do that. You cannot go online and purchase a Bible. So the Christians there, or people that are hungry for the Word of God, have no access to get a Bible. And remember, I talked about last week, look in your Bible. Take a look at what it says, where it was printed. And I said nine times out of ten, it's probably printed in the socialist communist country of China. Well, I have a New Testament who is who was um, given to me, and it is also a bilingual New Testament. It is in English, so I can read it. <laughs> if it wasn't, I wouldn't be able to read it. And it is in Chinese. Now, this Bible was not printed in China. Ha ha, obviously. Amity Publishing did not pub print this. This was put out by the American Bible Society and is actually printed in Hong Kong, which is part of China sometimes. That's what a lot of this is going on in the world today has to deal with the protests that took place in Hong Kong back in January. We'll get into that at another time. But this Bible was not printed in China. I have this in my hands. I can read on one side the English. The other side is Chinese. Like I said, I cannot read Chinese. I have the English. I can read this. I can give this to a Chinese person, a brother or sister in Christ who's watch the Bible, and they can read it in their own Chinese language. It's fantastic, our technology, to get this to somebody. So I want to speak about some Pray for China, prayer requests that Chinese believers have. And I want to start out back in 1989, 31 years ago. A woman named Sarah Liu was raised in communist China. She was not a Christian, not raised in a Christian home. In 1989, through a series of events, and because of the love and prayers of her mother, Sarah became a Christian and became an evangelist in her church, spreading the gospel. Just as Miriam and Marzea spread Bibles in Tehran, in the capital of Iran, Sarah took Bibles, took literature to the places in her area in China. Now remember, folks, China. How many people live there? Well, first of all, how many people are there in the world? We'll start there. There's roughly between seven... It's 8 billion, with a B, like that B, billion people in the world. China has 1.3 billion people. Now, along with India, who has about 1 billion people, these two are the most populated countries of the world, and they make up almost a quarter, one-fourth of the whole world's population, China and India. So to get to these countries, to spread the gospel is very important. That's why Americans, Westerners, go to these countries and they're not looked at as welcome. So we need people. The Lord uses people who are Chinese, who are Indian, to influence their own members of their culture, their own countrymen. So Sarah Lou was baptized in 1991, and I want to explain to you a little bit about her baptism. Now, we in America and we in the Western church, we think of baptism as... You go to a church, everybody's dressed in their suit, and the women have their dresses on, and up in the front you have this beautiful pool, a tub, with a backdrop with like a forest scene. And the pastor comes down in his tie, and probably a white shirt, and the bat person to be baptized has usually a white gown or robe on. And it's warm water, and it's in a heated environment, and you have stained glass windows on the side in the church. Or a lot of times it's done outside in a nice spring day, a warm setting where it's in a pond, a clean pond, in the daytime where many, many people, and this is something when family comes to see, they want to see their family baptized, their member baptized. So it's a nice warm setting. 
the pastor takes the person, the candidate, to be baptized and says, on profession of faith, you accept Christ as your Savior. And they say, yes, I do. They may give their testimony a little bit. And then he says, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then he brings them out and it's, hey, all right. They go out, they change back into dry clothes, and there's a celebration afterwards. And as well, there should be. Now, that's in the American church. That's in the Western church in the world. In China, I'm going to explain to you how people are baptized, how people who are so dedicated, when they get saved, they say, what's stopping me? Remember the Ethiopian eunuch in the book of Acts? I asked Philip, what do I need to be saved? He was told the story of Isaiah 53. What's preventing me from be ba being baptized? There's water right there. Boom, went down, Philip baptized him right then and there. There was no waiting, no, well, let's wait till spring when it's warmer. Let's wait when we can get the baptismal borrowed. Let's wait till we can get a lot of people to come. It was bam. Salvation followed by baptism. Now Sarah, when she was baptized, it took place in the winter, the cold winter. And I'm going to read a little bit from her book. Sarah wrote two books, Sarah's Journey of Faith, Volume 1. And then Sarah wrote another book, Sarah's Journey of Faith, Part 2. Journey to Faith. From Water, Fire, the Prison Years. So Sarah suffered much in prison for her faith. But I'm going to read a little bit about her baptism. She says, Baptism, this was not a celebrated public display. Instead, it was a quiet church event conducted in the dead of night. Remember, in the wintertime, cold. It was just after midnight. We gathered far away from public view and even farther away from the city officials and the police. We would gather at homes prior to our trek to the local river. Then, in the early morning hours, we would quietly make our way to the designated site. Now, the designated site was not a swimming pool. The designated point was a cold river or stream in the dead of winter and the dead of night. Our leaders directed us to sit in rows and call upon the Lord. There I bowed face down in prayer and silently waited for my baptism. Finally, I was tapped into going to the freezing waters. I removed my heavy winter jacket and only presented myself with my baptismal gown. I was not focusing on the fact that the waters were cold or it was night. Rather, my attention at that moment was one of curiosity. What will they do to me? What will happen next? I thought. One of the two brothers extended his hand to me. And I thought, he asked me, he said, are you Sarah Lou? Yes, I replied. Then he asked, are you dead to the world? Yes. Their final question was, will you be buried with Christ and then rise again in newness of life? Yes, I answered resoundingly. At that point, they invoked the ancient baptismal formula of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. A brother led me back to the bank. I went down into the water before that. I came out. A brother led me back to the bank. Despite the harsh conditions, the coldness, my heart burst with delight on that cold, dark night. After making my way back to the village, we dried off and prepared for bed. I lay down that night and reviewed the evening's activities. It was as if I were born again, again. She'd been born again. Now she was baptized. Now she had received Christ and she was baptized. And because of her obedience, she was glad to be baptized. Now, Sarah also um, went to prison. And if you go on uh, YouTube, look up her video, Sarah's Trail of Blood. Talks about her being arrested in the night and being taken to jail. And they beat her. They hit her feet so much and they shackled her that when she walked, she left a trail of blood. She suffered for her Savior many times in her life. Praise the Lord, she was released, she came to America, she now lives in California, and she goes around to many conferences, VOM conferences, Voice of the Martyrs has her at many conferences where she speaks and tells of her baptism, speaks of her conversion, speaks of what she's been doing for the Lord. Now I have these wristbands, rubber wristbands, they look like barbed wire. These are given out by Open Doors, Open Doors USA, fantastic organization that deals with the persecuted church, helps them. They give out these rubber bands that look like barbed wire as a reminder to pray for the believers in prison, to pray for the believers who are in chains and behind bars. And it says on these, one with them, because as Hebrews tells us, we are one with them. If one part of the body suffers, all parts of the body suffer. So pray for China. Now I'm going to do another show on another 
segment on China. I'm going to get into more specifics about Pray for China. I've talked about a little bit about Sarah Lou and some other things today, but I'm going to get more specific on the next program. But right here, two things until then you can pray for China about. Number one, please pray that the Chinese government would can deal, continue to deal favorably with China partnership as it makes God word, God's word available in China. Getting God's word into China is so important. We work with a company called Bibles for China. We raised almost $400 to send Bibles to China. Ah, you say you can't send Bibles to China. You're right. You know what we did? You know what Bibles for China does? They have reams of paper that we buy. They send them there. Once they're in country, they print the Bibles from this paper because the paper is the biggest expense in printing Bibles. Once the paper's there, they can print the Bibles in the undercover, in the secret of darkness, and smuggle them. Remember I talked about that last week? They don't send Bibles. They smuggle them. They smuggle them in. They smuggle these Bibles to people who want them. Might just be a New Testament. Might just be the Gospel of John. Because the smaller it is, the easier it is to conceal. And the Gospel of John is the number one way in the Bible that people can understand. John wrote that book, John 3.16. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's Romans. But in John 3.16 it tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So they print these Bibles. And they get them to the people. They print them in country. Second prayer request, pray that believers in rural China, you know, you hear of Beijing, you hear of Peking, you hear of these big cities in China. But the majority of the 1.3 billion people who live in China live in rural areas. So pray for them that the gospel would spread and that they would be able to read the Bible in their own language. And the Chinese language has many dialects, as Mandarin, Sichuan, Canton. Many different regions of China have different ways that they read the Chinese graphics, the Chinese symbols. So pray for the rural people that people, missionaries, can get in there, teach them how to read. Because once they know how to read, they're hungry for the Word of God. They will read they will learn, they will become Christians, and then it will spread like wildfire. Remember we talked about last time, it spread like wildfire. The underground church spreads like wildfire. Open Doors has a magazine called Presents. comes out every two months. Get it for free. VOM, Voice of the Martyrs, has a magazine that comes out every month. comes out every month. You can get it for free. There are other organizations get involved in. Save the Persecuted Christians. Great organization. Does a lot of adv advocacy in Washington, D.C. Right now they're doing about Mary from Iran. Get involved in these organizations. Support them. Get their literature. Get to know what's going on in the world of persecuted believers. If you're a Christian, they are brothers and sisters in China, in Iran, in Eritrea, Nigeria, Afghanistan, Cuba, Many, many countries of the world where persecution is very severe. Get involved. So I pray that you would get involved. Pray for China. Pray for these other countries. Ask the Lord. Seek Him. What country would you want me to pray for? Break my heart for these countries. Burden me for these countries. Then you can pray specifically for the needs that they have. So we'll be back next time. when I'm going to go into a little more detail about the prayers for China. Getting Bibles to the believers. Getting Bibles to the people that need them. One of the most important things. God's word will not return void. We'll see you next time in part three of Pray for China.